the button. Hello and welcome to another video in the Trinity Business Alumni interview series. This morning we join you after a TBA breakfast, a business breakfast in one of our corporate partner offices. We're in Accenture's office this morning and we're delighted to be joined by Paul Periotti, who is the Head of Strategy for Accenture in Ireland with a special responsibility for analytics. Welcome Paul, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to the TBA this morning. Firstly for the viewers and for me, can you demystify analytics, what does it mean? So. Um, and thank you for thank you for the being allowed to present. Um, for me, analytics is the intelligent use of information. So that could be for investment decisions. So where do you put your capital? Where do you put your people? It can be for operational performance. So how do you actually understand how you improve the delivery of something? The comparing performance of similar networks in your organisation and actually try to drive out savings there. And also, and for me, most importantly, changing the customer outcomes. You know, organisations have a wealth of information about their customers, too many of them provide a vanilla service and don't use that information to really customise and change and enrich the customer experience. Good. You spoke to us this morning about the investment that Accenture is making here in Ireland in analytics. Can you tell us a little bit about that, what brought it about and what does it consist of? Absolutely. So um, Accenture has selected Dublin as one of its global analytics hubs. So we've committed to create 100 jobs in this market that we based just up in Grand Canal Plaza, our analytics centre was launched last um, two weeks ago um, by Minister Bruton. Um, and really I think it's a very exciting thing for Ireland. Um, I think it's also good to acknowledge that there are a variety of other um, major multinationals and national companies that are investing in this capability. So for example, Ireland is already one of Aeon's global analytics centres. Google are also seeking to make that commitment just now. So from my take, it's a very exciting thing for Ireland and it's clearly something that we can differentiate ourselves as, as, a, as a, cent, a global centre of excellence in analytics. Thanks Paul. You spoke to us about a number of applications of, uh, of analytics, everything from uh, how best to, to score a penalty in a, in, in a premiership final. It's important. I, I, I don't doubt it. Uh, how how to score, best to score a penalty in, in, a, in a public or in a, in a, in a premiership final, um, how to best serve the needs of your customer and to understand where your customers are going tomorrow and also how to address some of the, the, the chronic problems in our health service. What do you see as the, the, the key opportunities for analytics in Ireland today? So, it, so for me, there's been a lot of history of analytics has been used often to improve corporate decision making. The next iteration, which there are, there are examples of this happen, but is the, the true embedment happened to, in the actual customer process. So, so let's give some examples. So one of the biggest issues in our healthcare system is that 70 to 80% of our hospital costs are generated by a relatively small proportion of our population that have a number of chronic diseases. Our unfortunate way of identifying those patients is to wait until they actually have a chronic, you know, a serious event and end up in hospital. You know, we can use, and there's a number of organisations, including Accenture, that are already doing this, you know, the information we have on our patients or our customers to actually predict who's likely to have these chronic diseases and actively go out into the market and change their behaviour, you know, interact with them to actually stop them ever having that, you know, that emergency event. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great example of something that's both cheaper for our health system and it's also in the patient's interest as well. Um, but other examples from that, and I think it's on the way um, very soon, when you start to realise that your mobile phone you know, is something that you carry about all the time, you know, and, and the thinking of what's that going to, how's that going to evolve, what services can organisations, you know, if an organisation knows where you are and knows how you're moving, what services can they build around that, be it in a healthcare, be it in a financial services, be it in the location-based advertising, and we're already seeing some good examples, you know, through sort of smartphones and how a variety of organisations, mobile firms and other firms, are really seeking to get aggressively into that market. You mentioned the, the foresight of George Orwell with the 1984 and the Big Brother, but, uh, but also the more recent film Minority Report. Um, I know that as I sat listening to your presentation, I began to become a bit concerned <laughs> at the, the um, extent to which the information that is generated about me and by me can be aggregated to produce insights that can be used by businesses and by government. Is data protection legislation strong enough to protect citizens in Ireland? So, so I think my view I think is a really good point. You know, and I think that, that you know, we need a debate around this in, in Ireland as I think as every other country. My personal view mm -hmm. in that debate 
is that we already have a very strong and robust data protection commissioner who, who actively enforces the legislation. Um, so my, my take is I think we've already got that in place absolutely as each of these new developments and new applications come into play and actually the chronic disease is a great example there of something that's in people's interests but you do start to get worried about well, how could that information be used Prevention is better than the cure, but the yeah. diagnosis can actually, yeah, right. can actually be a problem in itself. So, for example, if health insurers started to use that more efficient, which absolutely, to, to rather than just intervene to pr improve customer outcomes, they use that inter information to actively change pricing plans. Um, so we really do need to think it through. Um, I think for a lot of these services, it will be an opt-in model. I think that's the reality of it. Um, but yeah, it's an important point that we, we can only move these services along as quick as the public are willing for them to go and, and it's a, a debate we need to start very quickly. Finally Paul, you, you mentioned a, a challenge, but the challenge which presents an opportunity and I think an opportunity perhaps to us as Trinity Business Online to engage better with the universities and that skills shortage yeah. um, and the availability of graduates. Uh, I know having studied management science myself, we have quite a small class. Um, how do you see us addressing that and what role maybe can alumni play in working with universities to help perhaps to shape courses? Well, well I think um, there is a common acceptance that this is a great opportunity for Ireland. That you're, you're spot on. That the risk here is that we don't take that opportunity. There are, there are already hundreds of open roles, analytical roles in Ireland. Um, I think the answer is a coordinated approach. My view, and we're, we're working with the Analytics Institute in this, and, and very keen for other organisations to get involved, is that we need a national analytics strategy. We need something that looks at Ireland on a, at a national level and says, this is a thing that's important. It will create many jobs, it will improve our businesses and services, it will improve the, you know, the effectiveness and efficiency of our public sector. Let's join all these things together that will be a coordinated approach for that strategy. Part of that, absolutely, is changing the decisions of 17 year olds and 22 year olds, you know, about what's the degree they do and what's the masters they do. And, you know, every day, that, and we have a lot of interactions and extension with the universities, what we're being told by them at the moment is every single person that's doing the analytical based masters are coming out with it, you know, and getting the job straight out to it at the moment. And that doesn't surprise me if we as Accenture are struggling to recruit all these resources. You know, we, we won't be able to fix it in the short term, but um, but we do need, you know, significant investment in the human capital to ensure that we take full advantage of that of actually and create a load of jobs and, and growth for our economy. I suppose that goes back to second level I mean, to higher level mathematics and everything and doing research as well. 100%. For example, I remember when I chose to do mathematics, I remember my careers counsellor when I was 16, his response to me when I said I wanted to do mathematics at university was, um, well, so you want to be a teacher. There's nothing wrong with being a teacher, but we need to change that mindset now. Granted, I was at, you know, I was at school a long time ago. Um, but at the same time, we do need to get involved so that there is an awareness that, you know, in their teens that actually this is a great career path and you can really have a an exciting and rewarding career in actually making the analytics decision. Paul, thanks very much for a very engaging breakfast this morning and for joining us for the video as well. And thank you for watching. We hope that you'll be able to join us at future TBA events. Please do sign up at tba.ie and if you're not yet a member and are a graduate of Trinity College or no one who has yet to join, please encourage them at tba.ie.